My encounter happened to me late June, about five years ago. At this time, I was traveling north of Lexington, Michigan, which for those that don't know, is full of heavily thick forested area and lots of rural farmland all around. And of course, living here for the past five or six years before that, you hear tales sometimes about a strange creature known as the Dogman. Now at the time, or should I say before that, I didn't really buy into mysterious creatures that you could never see, kind of like Bigfoot, animals that were supposedly elusive to the rest of society. And living in this area for the past five to six years, of course I had heard of the Dogman, especially being neighboring states to Wisconsin, where they had this supposed beast of Bray Road, but again, at the time, I didn't buy a single ounce of it. But back on that day in late June, my opinion as a skeptic was forever changed. Like I said, I was driving north on the M25, north of Lexington. This was in the evening time, probably around 6 p.m., where everything is still rather bright. If you're heading northbound, you'll eventually get to a turnoff to your left, known as Helena Road. As soon as I turned onto this road, that's when I saw this creature. Directly to my left, it looked to be some farming equipment and some grain silos. Directly behind that was a thick cluster of trees and forest. And then, next to that and all around that was just empty farmland. I'm not sure if it was tilled or ready to be tilled. Either way, my eye caught initial movement, and when I looked, I see this massive creature walking from the empty field behind the trees. I got a good look at it, and there's no mistaking what I saw. This thing looked like an eight foot tall bodybuilder and had a very German shepherd like looking head. I remember its arms kind of swaying back and forth. It almost kind of reminded me of a gorilla, except again, it had a massive bodybuilder body, was eight feet tall and a German shepherd like head. I have to repeat the details to myself sometimes because frankly, I have a hard time believing it. Once this creature disappeared behind the trees, I still stayed slowed down just in case it decided it would reappear, but it never did. For the next few moments after, I just felt in total shock, like one of those moments where you think to yourself, did I really just see that? The logical side of your brain will try to run through every scenario possible to give you a rational explanation, just so you know you're not insane. There is nothing in the wilderness that can resemble what I saw that day. It was clear weather too, not a cloud in the sky, and of course, there were no other cars anywhere else around. M25 had a few other cars going up and down it, so traffic was minimal. There are houses that live directly off that road, so that's to be expected. But once you get a little further up north, traffic seems to die off a lot more. And Helena Road, for example, is kind of in the middle of nowhere. But as far as the sighting goes, it's something that has honestly just stayed with me for all this time. Even five years now, I still can't stop thinking about it. I kind of got a little crazy afterwards and spent all my time trying to see what I can find that would point me in the right direction. That's when I just had to swallow my pride and realize that there are things that are out there that we don't know about. Based off all the accounts I've ever heard, I do believe that what I saw was a dogman and then I do believe that they do exist. I can't be too sure about other states and other areas, but I know they're up here in Michigan and from what I saw that day, they look like a creature that you don't want to mess with or piss off accidentally. This creature looked mean, but unlike some people, it has not stopped my willingness to go out into the forest and hike and adventure. I still do go on hikes. I still travel into the woods. I still do lots of normal everyday activities outside. My mindset on the whole thing is just like, look, I know they're there now. I can't deny that, even though the skeptical side of me wants to. I just have to respect that they're there and leave them alone. And in turn, I have to hope that they'll leave me alone too. If you're interested, I can give you the exact location that I saw this creature at. It took me a little while, but I researched on Google Maps and found the exact spot in which I saw it. If you decide to read this to your audience, well, your audience can check this with me too. Go check out 9944 Helena Road, Harbor Beach, Michigan. It will take you to the start of a turnoff and to your left is those grain silos I was talking about, and that patch of trees, and all around you is basically just tilled farmland. The creature I saw was walking in that field, and for about four or so seconds, then walked behind that patch of trees and was gone. 
as you can see from the environment, there is nothing around there that you can mistake as a dogman. It stuck out like a sore thumb, and had I not been driving by, this thing would have stayed fully incognito and nobody would have ever saw it. When I think back and think about creatures like Bigfoot and Dogman and how they're supposed to be so elusive and nobody ever sees them, well, this thing was sure taking a risk just walking out into the open like that. Anybody else driving down that road at the same time I did would have had a clear shot of the same creature. If there's anything to be taken away from my own story and personal encounter is that you can never really be too sure. Yeah, it's okay to be skeptical of things, but don't be too hard-headed. Keep an open mind, because when the truth reveals itself, it could sometimes be a little more shocking than you'd like it to be. I'm not telling people to go out there and believe that dogmen exists. I'm just saying, keep an open mind. You never know what might happen in your life. Back in 2007, I went through a brief period of being homeless. Brief being around eight to nine months. I spent a lot of time hitchhiking, couch surfing, and just generally moving around from area to area. I want to say it was around September because it was still hot out and fall hadn't quite set in. I had a very good friend of mine who allowed me to stay on his couch for about three weeks. This is before things went haywire and we ended up in a drunken brawl and nearly had the cops call on us and I had to leave. But that's a story I don't want to get into because before I ended up on that friend's couch, I spent some time being homeless and down at the railroad tracks. The town I'm talking about is Kelso, Washington, a rather small but broken down town filled with a lot of poverty and drugs and crime. There's a big river that runs between Kelso and Longview, and it kind of borders the two towns. Longview is more the commercial uppity area, even though it has its fair of slums too. But Kelso really doesn't have anything. It's one of those older towns that used to be a logging community. But after the logging got shut down, things just took a turn for the worst. More and more poverty grew, drug use, and the cycle just rinsed and repeated over and over generations. It's a very sketchy place to be at night, and so that's why I spent a lot of my time right near the river, right by the train tracks. Not that this area was necessarily any better, but I felt I would at least be left alone. But even here, I had a nightmarish experience that kept me from ever going back. About right after this incident is when I ended up crashing out on my friend's couch for three weeks, which we then ended up fighting and I moved out of state again. I'm not here to BS you or to make up stories. This is what happened to me during my stint of being homeless. I've had some pretty bad run-ins with other people, bad people at that. I had been held at gunpoint and threatened with a knife at some point. I tried to stay as drunk and high as I could, just to numb out from the pain of not being wanted, of having nowhere to go. But this night that I had this experience, I had no drugs in my system, no alcohol, because at the time, I had no friends here. I didn't know anybody in this town, other than my friend, whom at this time didn't know I was here yet. All right, enough backstory. During the first three to four nights here, I tried to stay up all night long and wander around the train tracks because I felt if I kept myself up, I would avoid being mugged or robbed. This is the night that I believe I saw a werewolf. And maybe not a werewolf in a traditional sense where somebody turns under a full moon, but whatever animal, creature, whatever you want to call it I was looking at, resembled that out of a Hollywood movie. I was walking along the train tracks, northbound, and I heard some growling off to my left in the trees. I turned my head to see, and my eyes are met with another pair of eyes. Red eyes to be exact, but not cheesy glowing eyes like you would see from a monster movie. These were eyes that emitted light, much in the same way if you were to shine a light in a cat's eyes. It's that reflective gland they have. I don't know what they call it since I'm not a scientist, but it was that same kind of light emission. It immediately creeped me out because, well, there's no light shining anywhere. So how this thing's eyes were emitting light like that, well, it was beyond me. This thing steps out underneath the streetlight. This creature reminded me of The Fly. You know, the movie with Jeff Goldblum in it. It looked like somebody mixed a human with a Doberman Pinscher. This thing looked all sorts of nasty. Humongous teeth like a lion. And when I say this is like a Hollywood movie prop come to life, I'm not kidding. It moved and looked and breathed far too real to be somebody in a costume or some sort of prop. The second that it showed itself, I took off running in the opposite direction. 
and I never turned around once to see if it was going to follow me. All I can remember is the thoughts entering my head of what kind of freaking animals live out here, man. The only thing that I knew about the area where this thing came out of was that homeless people would sometimes go down into that little forested area, have sex, shoot up, you know. I had seen cops go down there a couple times, usually to bust people doing heroin, but other than that, I kind of stayed out of there in fear of getting mugged. That little area was also right next to the large river. I was so scared that I actually ended up running all the way to the south side of town, which is basically Crackheadville. I didn't care though. I'd rather be around a bunch of addicts and gangbangers than I would be that thing, whatever it is I saw, that by the way, didn't end up chasing me. I don't know if some portal to hell opened up and this thing stepped out or what, but hey, that's my experience in Kelso, Washington. As far as my adventures being homeless, well, that ended months later when I ended up finally settling down in Arizona, of all places. Fast forward 13 years later to now, I'm married, have a kid, I'm settled down, life is good. As far as what I saw that night, well, I still don't have an explanation for it. I just consider it some nasty creature that, for whatever reason, decided to show itself to me.